currently having his best season of his IndyCar Series career, fifth in points standings with three podium finishes in the last seven races here to race and win the MAV TV 500 at Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California this Saturday. Uh, Graham Rahal, good to see you here. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, having me. No, you bet. Good to see you. You're wearing, just for the radio audience, I'm trying to describe. You've got all, this is, these are all your sponsors? Yeah, you know, you got to. You can't fit them all on one shirt. No, you can't. Well, barely. Barely. We can squeeze barely. them on there. But the biggest one right there oh. in the middle. Is Steak the, and Shake. Oh. Steak and Shake. Which oh. is... For those, for those in the Midwest, East Coast, you get this. Let me tell you something about the Steak and Shake, Graham Ray Hall. They're in Indianapolis. Right there in Indy. Yeah. It's the spot at the NFL Scouting Combine post-midnight. Yeah. <laughs> where all of the coaches are done with all of their interviews and they, you know, they want to get their food on. You can go, I once saw Dick LeBeau, the venerable Dick LeBeau, just sitting there by himself in the Steak and Shake at one in the morning. The, the Steak and Shake in Indy, yeah. after the Indy 500, same thing. Is it really? A long day, everybody's ready to go eat. They all, yeah. after some party and you go to Steak and Shake. Yeah. But they actually have their own room for Andrew Luck, because Andrew Luck eats so much Steak and Shake that he's got his back room so he can go in there and sit down and eat. <laughs> now that makes it's a spot. <laughs> it's Andrew Luck, there's like a special room in the back of the Steak and Shake. Yeah, apparently, yeah. I did not know. Steve Mariucci is going to, when he hears this, he is going to demand, <laughs> to demand. Well, there should be a plaque of Mooch there because Steve Mariucci loves free stuff. And they give away, like, for, I guess one time we went there at a Steak and Shake late and they gave away, like, a free glass for every burger or something like really? that. And he bought burgers for the whole group and there were, like, 12, burger, 12 glasses. He was going to, I'm like, I don't know what you're doing with all 12 of them. He wanted more. So Wade Phillips who at the time was, I believe he was coaching the Dallas Cowboys at the time. He comes through, and Mooch asked him for his free glasses. And <laughs> Wade Phillips cost up his, his free steak and shake glasses to Mooch. I, I witnessed this, Graham. I swear. Well, I in Indy, it's, uh, it's, I mean, for me, being from Columbus, Ohio, it was cool. You know, when, we, when I was told steak and shake was going to mm -hmm. sponsor us this yeah. year, it was pretty awesome. And then the coolest thing I ever got was I got a steak and shake black card. Free steak and shake <laughs> for life. It's the most awesome yes. thing. That's amazing. So it's, like the, Amex, awesome thing. so it's like the Amex black Same, card in a way? It's in a way? titanium, the whole you thing. You feel it? Like it's weighty? Yeah. It's like a weighty? Yeah. I didn't know. Oh. See, these, I am learning stuff about I don't even know. They, the owner, Mr. Biglar, he gave it to me. Uh, my dad, he gave one to my dad, and I think Letterman's got one. Letterman has so, one. Yeah, it's wow. pretty cool. It's really titanium? Yeah. It's, it's, oh, a, it's a weighty card. What well, you wouldn't give to have that. I mean, it's awesome. Graham Rahal here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, now, I would think that you're from Indianapolis. Why, why Columbus, Ohio? Why, why, why there? Well, Graham. early in my dad's career, he was uh, supported by this guy named Jim Truman, who started the Red Roof Inn's hotel chain, among other things. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, when dad got his start in IndyCar racing, Jim said, you know, I'll, uh, I'll help fund you, but you know, you got to move to Columbus and you've got to help us raise some sponsorship and mm -hmm. do everything else. So in the early 80s, dad moved to Columbus, Ohio. And so that's where that's where I was from. And I lived there up until 2010. I left and moved to Indianapolis because mm -hmm. for IndyCar race and Indies, yeah, that's it. everything is an Indy. So sure. I moved over there. But uh, yeah, Columbus, diehard Buckeye, Blue Jackets fan, everything. So you are you're all in, obviously. So um, yeah, we I think we saw you at, at the Woody Hayes Center just a few days ago. Yeah, right? two days ago. You were we got, there. Got to go and uh, do another media day for a race we got coming up in Mid Ohio at the sure. end of uh, at the end of next month. Mm -hmm. But it was pretty cool for me. I got to meet some of the guys and. Uh, Who do you think's gonna be the quarterback? Who's starting? Who's starting? Handicap. I I don't know. I think uh, you know the. I think the buzz kind of feels like JT Barrett, but um, wow, that, one, that was kind of the third one I expected. But when yeah. I walked in the building, it kind of felt like, you know, from talking to some friends and stuff that are in the know, ex-players that mm -hmm. kind of know or connected, they felt like maybe JT's, JT's the guy. Um, if he wins that competition, that would be a shocker. And, would, and he, whoever wins let, the competition clearly deserves Let me tell you, though, start. I mean, I got to meet him and Braxton and Joey Bosa and all, all these guys. But JT Barrett's one of the nicest people I think I met in a long, long time. I mean, he really was very engaging. Oh, I wanted to sit and talk and stuff. And, you know, you don't meet too many guys in other sports that are typically like that. They're very, you know, focused on what they do, and that's about it. So uh, that was pretty cool. Braxton was really quiet. I think I got, like, maybe two words out of him. Mm -hmm. Same with Bosa. Did you meet Cardell? I Did didn't. So I've been told he is just a mountain of an individual, like well, bigger, bigger than he appears see, on See, I met Bosa, and when I saw Bosa, I was like, I mean, I stood next to the guy, and the pictures that were released on 
on Twitter and stuff. I mean, they, he looks bigger than me, but not like that much. Mm -hmm. But when I actually stood next to the guy, that guy was a beast. And I asked, I said, Cardell's bigger than him, right? And they said, no, not really, but it didn't matter. I mean, for a quarterback, he was a giant. Well, I mean, we're showing the photograph on Twitter, at Graham Rahal on Twitter, as a matter of fact. That's your Twitter address. And standing next to both. So many people believe you were standing next to the first pick, overall pick in next year's NFL draft. Uh, that if he has the year, If he has the year that I hope he doesn't have, being a Michigan Wolverine, <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, that he's going to go ahead and 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 go to have his first. He's he. First I mean, he's a pick. beast. He's a beast. Now I just hope that Ohio State can get his brother to come play and follow up behind him because apparently his brother's equally as big. How many yachts can you Buckeyes water ski behind? I, I, I don't know. I mean, come on. I don't know, I mean, but I'll take as many as we can find. I bet. I bet. <laughs> I bet. Uh, I'm with Graham Rayall here on the Rich Eisen Show. What is David Letterman like as a car owner? What is well, he like? Dave's a pretty cool guy, and, um, you know, Dave's passion has been IndyCar racing. He's from Broad Ripple, which is like 10 minutes from downtown Indy, and, you know, I, in, in the early 80s, he met my dad and decided if he ever wanted to be involved in racing, he was going to, you know, join up with dad and, and have a team, and so he actually bought in in the early 90s and was just a silent partner for probably 10 or 12 years before his name came out, but he's a lot of fun. I mean, they, you know what's funny about Dave is... Uh, He's, he's very shy, very shy. And, um, you know, when I met him, I figured, you know, late, late night talk show host, everything else, comedian, like he'd be outgoing and funny and everything. And he's very reserved. So you don't, you don't hear from him too much, but uh, I hope now he's retired, we get to see him at the track more. I mean, before uh, the requirement of the time was un unreal. And so hopefully we'll get to see him out there a bit more, but he loves it. He loves IndyCar race and that's for sure. We showed uh, uh, some video that we saw on ESPN Classic from 1971, where he was the reporter. Yeah. Out in the infield, I guess, for uh, right there, uh, right on pit row yep. as well, interviewing, uh, I believe it was Andretti. I, was saying, I think it was Mario race. broke yeah. down or crashed. Something happened. And he was the course reporter. Now, uh, they threw down to him as Chris Economaki, who it wasn't. And, yeah. and, then, and then as soon as they throw back up to the booth, it was Jim McKay, for crying out loud, yeah. saying that was our, no, it wasn't Chris Economaki, that was our reporter, David, David Letterman. Letterman. I know. <laughs> there he is on the course, right, right there, I mean, right, right there talking it's to Mario awesome. over... Over real, and that blew me away. And 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 there's talk that that might have been his first ever network television appearance it, I, of I'm his not, life. I should ask him about. It. I saw the same video, and I never asked him about it. Um, but I should I should put him on the spot and see if he remembers. I'm, how can you forget interviewing Mario and Andretti? I guess even though uh, uh, although he has interviewed a lot of other people. Well, no, I'm sure he remembers <laughs> this. Yeah, I mean, remembering his first you right, know, time on, on on major TV, TV, you know. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. All right, let's talk about you here. How, how do you feel your your career is going? Certainly well, we've kind of you know the last couple of years have been a bit up and down, and um, in 2013 I joined up with my dad to to drive for him, and uh, things didn't quite go as well. We've had a lot of sponsors in and out, and you know, signed long-term deals that kind of fell apart. So we've been recovering, it seems like, every year. And then this year, everything's just, we've just kind of hit our stride. I think the team is doing an excellent job, and, you know, we've had a lot of fun. Um, you know, a lot, of good, a lot of good races, driving for Honda. Uh, unfortunately, the Chevrolet's kind of beat us. At, you know, those who follow IndyCar know that Chevrolet's kind of dominated this season a bit. But, you know, we're leading the charge for Honda. To be fifth in points is quite an achievement. We haven't gotten a win yet, which drives me crazy, but... Uh, Hopefully we can. We got 500 miles this weekend on, yeah, on you're Saturday. Yeah, you're ovals it. for a change right now. Yeah, you know? I, mean, I mean we've we pretty well mixed, up. you know, between oval, road course, street course, but now we go into three in a row of just ovals. So mm -hmm. um, be interesting to see how we do. Right. I would say as a team, that's kind of been our weakness the last couple of years. And uh, so hopefully we can turn that around. I'm here with uh, Graham Rahal here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. And what is it like in Fontana? What is it like in, for here in Southern California? Fo Fontana's tough because, well, first of all. As all of us out here know, it's it's like the surface of the sun out there. It's red Saturday hot. at one thirty p.m. start. So how hot is it going to get in there for you? I would. It would be hot. It would be hot. Very sure. hot. And five hundred miles is a long time. And in the Indy car, you know, weight is everything. So we don't have much of a drink bottle uh, at all in there. So you know, to stay to stay hydrated and cool is going to be pretty difficult. But the biggest thing about Fontana is it's just it's very it, the, the speeds are high, and it's very easy to make a mistake. So you're just going to have to be on top of your game. And so, uh, can't you just crank the AC? Can't I wish. Crank? I mean, just like, you know, open the vents up. I and... Everybody says that to me. They're like, hey, it's an open wheel car, you know? Don't you just get, like, wind blowing all the yeah, time? Yeah, let your hair out. I wish. 
No, I wish. It doesn't work that way. They, they design it, you know, for all the wind to go over your head, so you right. don't really get any of that. Right. Uh, I'm here with Graham Rahal, 116 career IndyCar starts spanning eight years. So you've been at this eight years. That's eight, what yeah. I got, you know, I got pretty lucky that early in, uh, early in my career, uh, I was 18, my, I was still in high school, my first year professionally, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, when I was coming out of the junior formulas, junior categories, uh, this, uh, this guy you probably heard of, Paul Newman, I heard he, uh, he kind of gave me my first opportunity. And my dad drove for Paul in the early 80s, and then when I was, uh, this was 2007, so a year and a half, two years before he passed away, uh, he came up to me and, and wanted to uh, give me my first chance to drive an IndyCar, so I started then, and it feels weird. I mean, it's been as long as it as long as it has, but uh, I love it. Absolutely love it. It's funny because my kid knows uh, Paul Newman is the voice of Doc Hudson from Cars. But you know what most people? Yeah, like most people now do. It's <laughs> it's crazy. And when I tell people my age, you know Paul Newman, they're like, Yeah, I think I heard of him. Didn't he do Cars or yeah, something? Yeah, like, oh, he's Doc man. Hudson, right? You guys are missing out. Yeah, he's also a pretty pretty darn uh, uh, popular and successful in his own right. As Absolutely. An actor, you know, but that's I mean seriously, think it's pretty cool. You know what you've been able to experience in your life so far. And what's ahead of you as well. This is sure. pretty cool, Graham. That's pretty no, cool. I, I feel, you know, I feel pretty lucky to to be in my shoes and get to do it. I love them. I and mean, that's what we all, you know, sure. aspire to do. Is, yeah. You know, do something you're passionate about. So growing up with my dad, you know, IndyCar racing was like, it was my life, you right. know. And um, you just, it's like, you just can't. And, and, I mean, my nickname as a kid was The Shadow because anything I wanted to do was always follow dad around. Mm. I loved it. Well, you know what? You're going to put um, the Ray Hall name to the test out here in the DirecTV 100. You know what we're talking about, right? Or you don't know I do what we're talking about. Okay, because uh, uh, Joey Logano did it. Uh, Tony Kanan did it, right? Yep. Now, Who won the last one? Kanan? Uh, no, Tony won going away. Tony Kanan. Remember, he lifted, he he lifted the trophy. He, he crushed all of us. And then he kissed the brick. Tony the was one? probably pretty intense. Yeah. Oh, pretty intense. Pretty focused. 100%. Yeah. So now it's time to go out there for the radio audience. We're going to head out there, and richeisenshow.com is how you can follow the proceedings of the DirecTV, the third ever running of the DirecTV 100. In the meantime, thank you for coming in and sharing your stories of thank you. Steak and Shake and Letterman and, of course, your, your racing career that, uh, that has its next step in Fontana on Saturday. And uh, NBCSN at 4 Eastern time, by the way, is how you can capture the MAV TV 500 at Auto Club Speedway and at Graham Ray Hall on Twitter. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Ready to step outside? Appreciate it. Let's okay, do it. Okay, let's do it. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.